Okay, everybody, welcome back to Bullet Basics. Today we are talking about the Glock 43. So we're looking, talking about another Glock pistol today. Before we do, we're gonna send it over to Norm. He's got an awesome marketing message for us. He's worked hard on it like he does every week. Here we go. Guys, I, I really hate odd numbers. Can you, can you just subscribe? <sighs> Moving on, the Glock 43. This gun was late to the market if you're looking at Smith & Wesson having had the shield out for years and years and years. Glock 43 came out, geez, probably 2016, somewhere around there. And uh, obviously was instantly popular as many Glock pistols are because there's such a big following of Glock. Uh, just getting into the video, I like Glocks, don't love Glocks. I'm definitely not a Glock fanboy. I, I, in fact, geez, I don't, this is the first Glock I've ever even owned, technically. Uh, I've shot a lot of them, Glock 17s, Glock 19s, Glock 26, everything. I mean, uh, but this is the first one I ever purchased and this is the first one I ever owned. And so uh, look at it through that lens. I'm just not usually a Glock fan. I don't hate them, but uh, I've just, by the time I came really into the gun industry, uh, there were so many other options out there that I went kind of the Smith & Wesson M&P route. I just loved them uh, as well as the Springfield uh, XDs, XDMs, all those. So. Let's get into what we thought about the, the Glock 43 overall. First, we'll talk about the grip. Uh, as you can see here, we'll get the magazine in there with the fat, flat base plate there. Uh, the grip is fine. Um, the grip angle obviously is different than, than uh, most of the other popular pistols out there. It's a little bit more canted uh, than those. And as far as the texturing is concerned, it's got this whatever, this checkering pyramid, whatever you want to call it, all the way around it. And it's just not very aggressive. Now, I'm not super picky when it comes to most things on guns. I do like it a little bit more aggressive than that. Something more like the SIG, P365, Springfield Hellcat even. Uh, those two are both good for me. Uh, this one, however, is a little bit not aggressive enough. It's a little bit uh, tame for me. Uh, however, I would say it did not hinder, hinder anything. I was able to uh, stay on target. I was, it wasn't too snappy. It is a little bit snappy of a gun, but uh, like any small pistol in this category. Uh, but wasn't too crazy, uh, and the grip was enough uh, to work. But when my hands get sweaty, or in the worst case scenario, bloody, you know, uh, when they get wet, uh, it may be just a little bit too tame to keep it very controllable. But you know, it's a Glock, and and it's it's does the job. As far as how it feels, though, um, it is small, right? It's a basically it's a single stack almost six plus one, very narrow pistol, and so. When you're looking at it that way, yeah, it's small compared to some of those other beefy, you know, uh, more substantial grips, but it's nothing really to complain about if this is the, the size pistol you're looking for. Okay, so let's look at the sights. Just like any, really any Glock, it's got that um, kind of that U-notch or, yeah, U-notch, I would say, in the back there, and then the, um, the white dot in the front. Uh, I generally like Glock sights. Not a lot. I mean, they're not the best sights out there, but I, I don't just don't have anything to complain about. I can pick them up very easily. I can uh, get on target very quickly. There's not a lot of time to adjust to that. Uh, they are, you know, plastic Glock sights, so they can break. They are more fragile. That's just something you're dealing with. But if you're not um, doing anything crazy with your gun, I've just never had an issue with sights. Uh, and most people, from what I've seen, who own Glocks, a lot of Glocks, just don't really have all that many issues with sights. So take it for what it's worth. If it's something you don't like, um, you can definitely do something else. But uh, for me, uh, it, if this is the pistol that I choose, uh, the sights aren't going to hold me back at all. They're, in fact, uh, I'm pretty quick with them. So time to talk about trigger. Now, we talked about it in the, the uh, first impressions video, um, and we'll talk about it again. We'll kind of do the trigger pull. Uh, there is a little bit of creep here, but then a fairly crisp break, a good audible tactile reset, and not too much um, pull there. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a good trigger. I don't have anything to complain about it. It's not the best trigger out there. It's not like the Koenig TP9 series that I enjoy a lot or the Welder PPQ, nothing like that. Uh, but it's good. It's, I mean, Glock has done a good job over the years uh, improving the triggers and and uh, making sure that they're they're pretty good. And so I don't have anything to complain, complain about here. It's definitely something that uh, doesn't hinder me when I'm shooting. Um, and for me anyway, the trigger is one of the, the, the things that most quickly harms you being accurate, right? The gun's gonna be more accurate than I am, but if I can get a trigger that's really good, it's gonna help me be more accurate. 
uh, than it otherwise would than I otherwise would be. The one thing I didn't talk about is how far the reset is. It's just it's a pretty short reset. It's really good. Um, you don't have to come all the way out like some of the some of these others uh, that we've reviewed. By the way, we did review a bunch of them together. This along with I think seven others, and we put it in a review where it kind of did superlatives, the best trigger, the best sites, the best whatever. And we, we'll, we'll link it up here. We had a really a lot of fun doing it because uh, we could compare them all side by side. Some of the most popular ones like this, uh, as well as some of the ones on the outskirts that aren't as popular. We just wanted to have a good mix of them in there. And so we had a lot of fun doing it. It's well worth checking out to see which one we picked as kind of our favorite gun. We'll link it up here and uh, it's definitely worth checking out, guys. Okay, let's talk reliability. Now, Glocks are known for the reliability. That, in fact, that's why there's such a huge base of people that love Glocks and just buy Glocks nonstop because uh, it's they just work man. I mean you can put this thing through all kinds of torture and they just tend to work And so people love them for that as they should right? It's the most important thing you can talk about with guns with a concealed carry gun Especially you want it you want to know that it's going to shoot when you pull the trigger and only when you pull the trigger And so uh, this one we put about put about 300 rounds through it uh, That's about the, the number we put through them and it did have one malfunction now that one malfunction is 100% ammo related uh, in fact, most of the guns we reviewed had at least one malfunction. Not all of them, but most of them had at least one malfunction. And it was always with that ammo. And this ammo, I can't remember, it's like Max Tech or something. And whatever batch we got, I don't know if that's kind of the normal. We've never got it again, but I don't know if that's the normal experience people have with it. But it's so you can feel it no matter what you shoot with. It, it just does, there's no, it's got, it's just gutless ammo. And so it caused a malfunction. In fact, the ammo got the round got stuck in the chamber and it took a, a while for us to get it out which I've never had before but I do know it was ammo related everything else shot flawlessly we put hollow points um, I think some spear gold dots some American tactical something or another um, and then several different types of ball ammo and that was the only one that had a problem everything else functioned flawlessly uh, in fact we put a bunch of that max tech whatever it was through it and it functioned perfectly except for that one round and so it is what it is. Um, it sucks that it happened, but you know, I, if you can blame the ammo, you get better ammo, then there's nothing to worry about. So I'm 100%, this was, I, in my mind, 100% reliable, uh, even considering it had that one malfunction. Which, which by the way, uh, pretty much every gun I own, I've shot that ammo through because we had a couple hundred rounds of it, several hundred rounds of it. And pretty much every gun, uh, the m and shield had an, an issue with it or more than one probably my full-size cane all my canix had an issue except for the small one the uh, subcompact um, Pretty much every gun I have I have shot with that through it and Every one of them has had an issue with it just because it can't get that slide It won't extract the round and get that slide to pick up another one. And so it is what it is Okay, let's talk concealability uh, very small very compact like any of these guns are it's very thin uh, this gun is extremely concealable. I would say it's more concealable than most of these other pistols we've looked at uh, Just simply because it's small compact and and really good Glock is known for having smaller guns, right? When you compare them to most of the other ones, they're thinner. They're smaller. Uh, they're just built to be uh, Kind of the industry leader in that front and so the Glock 43 though. I wouldn't say it's industry leading anymore. Uh, it's definitely still a um, perfectly concealable gun and Quite honestly if we're gonna move into aesthetics our favorite part, right? Uh, I think it looks good. Glocks tend to be very simplistic, right? As we all know. And when you shrink them down, I think Colian Noir years ago when he re reviewed the Glock 43, um, and he, I think he compared it to this, the M&P Shield, he mentioned uh, the Glock 43, the simplistic design on the smaller gun looks great. And I completely, the it's perfect. I mean, the, the, the simplistic design looks good. Uh, whereas some on the, the bigger ones, it kind of looks like they're playing a little bit. Uh, it's not the case for this one. Okay, as always, let's bring it all together as a concealed carry option. What do I think about it overall? As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm really just not a Glock fanboy. I'm really not a Glock person at all. <clears throat> but I will say this. I found myself when I took all the guns out at once, a couple of times actually, uh, and I looked at them all and I found myself coming back to this gun as well as really two others. I kept coming back, coming back, coming back to the Glock 43. Now, I don't, I don't know if that means this is the one that I would choose. You'll have to check out other video for that. We'll link it up again here. Uh, but I was in, it was interesting to me to find out that, man, I just kept, I liked it. There was something about it. There isn't any one individual part that I like about it. The trigger wasn't the best. The sights aren't the best. The grip isn't the best. But 
for some reason, I just kept coming back to the Glock 43 and like, I want to shoot that one again. I want to shoot that one again. Right. And so that to me tells me there's something they did right. Even if the individual parts aren't perfect, they put the gun together and it's a great gun uh, altogether. And, and that's well worth uh, mentioning because if I want to pick it up over some of these other ones that have superior parts in some, to some degree, uh, then Glock did something right. Who cares what the individual parts are? If I'm going to pick the gun up anyway, they did it right. So take that for what it's worth. I do like Glocks. I don't love Glocks. And yet I, I really did enjoy this gun. In fact, I'll probably end up keeping this one uh, and put it in the, the um, rotation. One thing to mention though, as I mentioned before, there is there are only six rounds. And so it is a fairly expensive gun. Uh, I think it's about 420 bucks. Uh, I'll have to note it up here if it was different than that, maybe 450, depending because I got the green one. But I think it's about 420. So you're paying 400 bucks, uh, where you could be getting a Hellcat or a P365 for just 50, 50 bucks more, 70 bucks more, depending uh, on where you get it. And you can get almost twice as many rounds as this. And so if you're worried about round count and stuff like that, then it's well worth paying up, in my opinion, to get something with more rounds. But if that's not something you're worried about, if you just would, don't mind carrying an extra a mag. Uh, then this is well worth getting and you're paying 50 bucks, 75 bucks less. And so it's, if, if you like Glock or if you have just picked up the Glock 43 and said, Hey, you know what? I think that's my gun. Well worth it. Reliable, fantastically built gun, still worth buying in the post, uh, kind of high capacity world of this, the P365 and the Hellcat. So there you go. All right, you guys, as always, like, subscribe, comment down below, watch our videos all the way through, and not just our videos, every gun channel uh, on YouTube, show YouTube that, that we are just the most engaging uh, audience there is out there. I guess we'll just say we love you guys. We'll see you in the next video.